ladies and gentlemen. Mio leads EV market with 6K deliveries, ready to announce strategic battery swap fee adjustments amid growing competition. All right, folks, we've just got our hands on the insurance registration data for the past week, and there's also some exciting news on the horizon from NEO. In just two days, they're set to make a major announcement that could have significant implications for the future of the company. But first, let's dive into those insurance registration numbers. Starting off, NEO has secured the fourth spot on the list of Chinese new energy vehicle manufacturers. The top three spots are currently occupied by companies producing gasoline-powered vehicles and hybrids. NEO, with a solid 6K vehicle deliveries, is leading among pure electric vehicle makers. The closest competitor, Zeker, follows with 4600 deliveries. After that, we have Deepol, which delivered 4200 vehicles. Deepol, like some of the others, also offers hybrid vehicles. Xpeng, another notable player, managed to deliver 3,500 vehicles, which is a bit more than half of what NEO delivered. Xiaomi, on the other hand, only managed 2,900 deliveries. There were moments earlier in the month when Xiaomi delivery numbers spiked, leading to concerns that they might be eating into NEO market share. However, that doesn't seem to be the case, as NEO numbers remain strong. ArcFox, which delivered 2,500 vehicles, continues to hang on. Though you don't see them much on the roads in China, they're mostly used for services like Uber, but some private owners still opt for them. Denza, with only 1,700 deliveries, is clearly struggling, despite offering hybrid options. Now, when comparing these numbers to traditional auto manufacturers, it's impressive to see that NEO has once again outperformed brands like Lexus in terms of deliveries, with more NEO vehicles hitting the roads in just one week than Lexus managed to deliver. NEO also outpaced Volvo, which, unlike NEO, sells both gasoline and electric vehicles. It's worth noting that both Lexus and Volvo primarily sell gasoline cars, so NEO outselling them with pure electric vehicles is quite an achievement. However, when stacked against other traditional automakers like BMW, Audi, and Mercedes, the comparison shifts because those brands' figures include both gasoline and electric vehicles. Still, if we isolate the numbers for pure electric vehicles, NEO stands at number one, trailing only Tesla, which delivered 14,400 units. Tesla continues to dominate the pure electric vehicle market in China, largely because their vehicles are generally more affordable than NEO offerings. So, considering that, NEO performance is commendable. The situation becomes even more intriguing when we consider the upcoming entry of Envo into the market. There's speculation that Envo could potentially top these charts, which would shake up the current rankings. Imagine seeing Envo at the number one spot instead of Li Auto. If that happens, it'll be interesting to see how Li Auto responds. They might even stop publishing these numbers altogether, using some excuse like maintaining fairness in the market as a cover for not being able to hold the top spot anymore. It wouldn't be the first time a company has done something like that when they find themselves no longer in the lead. Moving on to the main event Neo big announcement. They're planning to hold a conference in two days, on the 5th, where they're expected to talk about adjustments to their battery swap fees. This is significant because the current battery swap fees in China are viewed by many as being a bit too high. Let me explain how it works. Previously, NEO charged both a service fee and an electricity fee per kilowatt hour, similar to how traditional charging fees operate the more you use, the more you pay. However, about a year ago, they shifted to a new pricing model where the electricity fee remains, but there's now a fixed swap service fee. Every time you go for a battery swap, you're charged a fixed fee of either 30 RMB or 50 RMB, which is roughly $6 to $8, in addition to the electricity fee. Many customers feel that this new model is too expensive. As a result, unless they have free battery swap vouchers or are in an emergency, most people prefer to charge their vehicles instead of swapping the batteries. This is why you still see a lot of NEOs being charged rather than swapped, as the higher service fee makes swapping less attractive. 
For instance, if your battery is only half drained and you go for a swap, you still have to pay the full 50 RMB service fee, which doesn't seem economical. Therefore, many NEO owners opt to charge their vehicles instead, as charging incurs a smaller service fee and is generally more cost-effective unless the battery is nearly depleted. In those cases, swapping might make more sense. NEO likely has data showing that most customers who do use the battery swap service are either doing so for free or using vouchers. Once those vouchers run out, and if their battery isn't almost empty, they're more likely to opt for charging instead of swapping, unless they're in a time crunch. So, adjusting the service fee downwards could make swapping a more attractive option, which in turn could boost business by encouraging more people to swap instead of charge in those scenarios I've described. Another reason for this potential fee adjustment could be the impending launch of Onvo, which might offer a different fee structure for battery swaps. If Onvo battery swaps are cheaper than NEO, that could upset a lot of NEO customers. By adjusting their prices now, NEO could be leveling the playing field ahead of Onvo entry, ensuring that their swap fees are competitive and fair across the board. This strategy would make a lot of sense, especially if it prevents any backlash from customers who might otherwise feel they're getting a raw deal. For those who might not know, I personally enjoy unlimited free battery swaps as an early NEO owner. Many early NEO customers who purchased their vehicles in 2020 or earlier also have this perk, while those who bought later typically receive four to six free battery swaps per month. However, since last summer, NEO switched to offering free swap vouchers instead. As a result, most NEO owners still take advantage of free swaps whenever possible and only opt to charge when necessary. If they have to choose between paying for a swap or charging, they usually reserve the swap for emergencies and charge their vehicles under normal circumstances. So, NEO needs to ensure that the swap fee is reasonable enough to avoid any sense of unfairness. This upcoming announcement regarding the battery swap fee adjustment is a significant development. By fine-tuning these fees, NEO could make swapping a more appealing option, thereby driving more business in that direction. This could also preempt any potential issues arising from Onvo entry into the market. So, keep an eye out for this announcement, it could mark an important shift in NEO strategy and have broader implications for the electric vehicle market in China. Thank you for joining us today. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more stock predictions and market insights. Remember to turn on the notification bell so you never miss an update. Happy investing, and see you in the next video.